Hello everybody, it's the Historical Gamer once again, and today we're returning to our War in the Pacific series against XTRG. I lost track of what episode this is. I think it's 79, maybe? Um, it is February 22nd of 1942, uh, and we are in the midst of our campaign against the Japanese. Recently, we moved to Bombard Midway, but then we withdrew uh, from Midway um, because of uh, enemy... enemy cruisers showed up near midway oh wait fuel cargo burning well that's not good <laughs> japanese uh submarine just torpedoed a cargo ship of ours it had left i think los angeles or maybe it was san francisco it's on its way toward australia it's a bunch of ak's carrying fuel super inefficient way to transfer fuel to uh to australia but uh, it is one of the ways that we're fueling uh, the ships over there or the, yeah, the ships that are moving over there. Another Japanese uh, submarine tor trying to torpedo a tanker of ours that's also on its way to Australia here, uh, bringing vital fuel into the Australian economy. However, that submarine failed in its mission, and its torpedo missed. Japanese continue to bombard in Wangkau along the Chinese coast here. They keep bringing cruisers in here to bombard this force. They're slowly wearing us down and really kind of doing some damage there, but so far they have not yet been able to take the, the port city of Wenkau. Further landings on the eastern corner of the Dutch East Indies near Java. Uh, most of those islands are not going, uh, all those islands are not going to be able to um, really withstand any sort of Japanese landing or force. Belugan, you would know the answer better than me in terms of what's on the map and what's not. You've been playing War in the Pacific way longer than I have, or at least more than I have. By the way, guys, let me know if you can hear me okay. I'm, I uh, accidentally minimized OBS, but I don't want to alt-tab out, because if I do that, then it'll it'll kind of mess up the stream. Uh, RO-61 off the coast of Australia. Apparently it was a sub-attack, but our AM got in the way. Man, this is a busy turn for subs. U.S. subs off the Caroline Islands to the northwest of Truk uh, are being attacked by Japanese sub chasers out that direction. Although largely indecisive with the exception of the single cargo ship that we had sunk. Okay, recon aircraft over Rangoon. I'm continuing to be surprised by the fact that he has not tried to bombard our... Uh, our ships unloading supplies at Rangoon. We've had probably 20 cargo ships trickle through Rangoon over the last week or so, bringing more than 40,000 supply into that base, and he has not made a move to interdict any of it, despite clearly having detection ratings on most of those ships. So I'm not going to complain about it. I, I do have like 60 fighters there, so we could make an air battle of it. We'd lose, but we could make a fight of it. Um, but I, I'm just kind of surprised that he continues to be so passive there. His, his planes obviously have to be somewhere else doing other things. We have seen them bombing Singapore a bit over the last few days, and he's definitely been bombing parts of China pretty heavily. Um, we know we've spotted bombers off Timor, where I think he has some GM-3 or GM-4 Nels. You can see here a pretty large formation moving against our large Chinese formation here in China. 172 casualties, some disabled non-combat losses, uh, moderate sally raid here at Singapore, didn't really do any damage to the soldiers, follow on sally raids, must have had some uh, penalties to coordination there, another raid on uh, Singapore, he's using a lot of older like dive bomber, army dive bombers, and we're reporting quite a few enemy aircraft damaged by flak, which I, get, I guess is good, although it does eat up a fair amount of supply. More single-engine dive bombers trying to hit our troops in China there. We've got over 200,000 troops in that hex, by the way, so losing a couple hundred here and there disabled is not the end of the world by any means. They're also in the process of trying to evacuate west to cross that river and retake that key city and kind of get back into rougher terrain in toward the interior of China without having our core army destroyed. As a reminder, he did cut the core, sort of our main army in central China, completely off with some pair drops in our rear. And uh, we probably retreated the wrong way because the direction we retreated doesn't have a roadway to bring extra supply down, but... 
Meanwhile, you can see our bombers. We brought the Chinese Air Force in from Chungking. We threw out a couple of bomber orders to the handful of bombers that we have here, our SB-3s and uh, DB-3Ms. 26 bombers attacked Japanese troops in our same hex, inflicted 138 casualties, although just disabled, but still pretty good results there from the Chinese Air Force. Now we got a second raid coming in, 12 more SB-3s and 7 A-29A Hudsons against his troops there. No fighter cover over his men, and another 64 troops disabled, so good results there. Probably caught him a little bit off guard because we really haven't used the Chinese Air Force for anything. Um, so a little bit of a strike there. It was a little bit. Ooh, just a little bit. Ooh, just a little bit more. Okay. You can, again, you see he's he's flying fighter sweeps over the hex, but he's not flying cap. Okay, more bombing action here at Manila. Doesn't look like, or sorry, Batan. Doesn't look like any damage done to our troops there. He's got really bad coordination on these raids on Batan. Five lilies there, six ands there. It is also a thunderstorm, so that's probably the reason he's not doing basically any damage to the troops there. So that's going to do it, I think, for the air phase. So largely indecisive turn, I think. More subs here. It looks like our destroyers are trying to attack his I-4 here near the ba Bass Strait. Um, we have an AO, apparently, on the way into Melbourne, I believe, or on the way out. I think she's on her way into Melbourne with two destroyer escorts. Looks like the destroyer sighted the I-4. The I-4 never got into position, but we weren't able to depth charge. Dutch sub diving from Japanese torpedo or anti-submarine warfare off Mascar. More troops unloading. And I think that probably moves us into the land combat phase. It does. Okay, so a Japanese brigade is attacking on the northeast coast of Molokas. Moroti, the base, is taken. No losses. Of course, we didn't have any troops there. Meanwhile, a Japanese deliberate attack on the island of Mindanao. Here, you can see he's got a, uh, an infantry regiment, two SNL, three SNLF units, a naval guard unit, and then the Curry SNLF unit. You can see our defenders here are actually still in reasonably good shape. He hasn't had very much success at all at bombarding us. If we fast forward through here, our troops do get worn down a bit. We do suffer a fair bit of disruption. 77 units disabled. Only two squads destroyed. 503 casualties. Two engineers and eight guns. But he lost 2,272 men. 50 squads disabled. Uh, or sorry, 50 squads destroyed. 132 squads disabled. One non-combatant destroyed. One gun destroyed. One vehicle destroyed. That is a good result for us in a failed Japanese deliberate attack at uh, Kaigan, or Kaigan, uh, on the island of Mindanao. So our forces at Batan are hanging out up in the north, and then sort of our mini Batan in the south with our 11,000 troops, 83 guns, and 54 vehicles hang tough against a Japanese force just under 10,000 men. Uh, he definitely hasn't deployed enough troops there. And the good news is that, uh, you know, he didn't even reduce the fort because it's one to two odds, so fort level stays at two. We probably have some supply problems there, however, because I don't remember there being any extra supply there. So that battle probably burned through whatever remaining reserves we had in supply. And that might have been the last hurrah for those troops of ours there. I would imagine we will lose pretty decisively any future battle uh, in Mindanao. But don't tell him that because that was a good result that might give him a little bit of pause in attacking again. 50 squads dis destroyed is like 50 v victory points, so that's good for us because we all we all we are always going to lose that entire land force. But uh, any meaningful damage we can do to him is is great. I mean, 50 victory points is like heavy cruiser and a couple of destroyers. Meanwhile, Horatio Hornblower's uh, HMS Hotspur has arrived off map, and that's the rest of the results. So let's go ahead and jump in. So if we go to Mindanao, where that last battle was fought, we check the base Kayagun. You can see here we only have 20 supply left, which is not great. Um, that battle burned through the rest of our supplies. The 102nd Filipino Infantry Division uh, is 
below its requisition of supplies. So it's red, meaning it's operating low on supplies. The rest of the units are still at their full supply complement. So that is good. Um, that might mean if he attacked again that we would we would still have one more effective fight in us. Uh, but again, this is, doesn't bode well because we do use supplies over time. And um, yeah, so that's not a great, you know, the, the fact is these troops are going to surrender eventually. Um, I think the main hope is that now he, he waits another couple of weeks or, you know, maybe launches a hasty attack. I do have one patrol craft, the Zeman, which has brought probably four or 5,000 additional supply over the course of the last month into Bataan. Um, it is currently at Tarkin. It has suffered a fair amount of cyst damage because it ran out of fuel at one point. But I am going to load it up with 635 supply, and I am going to try and sneak it into Kaigan. Uh, if I can get it in there, then, you know, that'll, that'll go a long way toward getting all of our troops back up to snuff in terms of supply. Uh, it won't give us the required amount of supply of 1,900 for like a full refill of supply. But 600 supply is enough supply to completely rearm these three regiments almost. Um, so, I mean, it's not an in insignificant amount. It might be enough to allow us to hold out an extra week or so. Um, we should probably make sure that we have these guys follow coastal. So they go a little bit more direct, but they also um, hopefully avoid any of his like task forces or anything that might be around. It's probably going to take two or so turns for them to fill up. They are slightly detected also probably by Japanese recon, so we don't want to be sitting in any one spot too long. Uh, if we make the base Kaigun, there's no fuel there, so flank speed would probably be a bad idea. We might be able to get him in, but we well, we don't even have enough fuel to get him in, so we'll just set it to, uh, to mission speed. Um, but yeah, they're already spotted right now. Although a 4-4 detection, he might think they're a sub or something. I'm not really sure. Uh, meanwhile, you can see he's continuing to advance up the sort of eastern, southeast, or southeastern, southwestern portion of the Dutch East Indies. He's got troops at several other bases on Flores. Those will fall probably this turn. It looks like he's got task forces with some transports and cruisers uh, and other ships all sort of in and around Mascar. I don't think he's going to make a move for Java quite yet. I think he's probably going to continue moving up the islands to the southeast of Java. The reason for that is he has not even bombed Surabaya yet. And we have 139 aircraft at Surabaya. Now, they're not good aircraft. They're not going to hold out against uh, the Kiributai or large numbers of Japanese aircraft. But we still have 36 fighters here. And we have 75 bombers here. So, again, he can reduce us pretty quick. But I don't think he's going to make a move to land until he's softened us up. And so far, we've seen basically no air cover over, over Surabaya. So he may be waiting to get air units into position, but I think he will probably launch the bulk of his raids from Mascar, which is a level 3 airfield. Uh, I think that's the only level 3 around right now. Um, Kendari's a 4, but that's like 5 hexes further back. So, um, yeah. We probably should spread our aircraft out a little bit more. Most of our uh, aviation support is at Sorbet, which makes things a little bit difficult to spread out effectively. Um, we could, I probably should spread, I don't know. Um, let's see. My AV supports a little bit, I mean, not super spread out, but we've got a regiment south here. I don't really anticipate meeting them on the beaches, so I don't, you know, I think my, my ultimate plan is probably to pull back into Batavia, which is an urban hex, so it gives us a big defensive bonus. It's also further from any of his air support, so it's going to make it harder for him to pound those troops and to form like our own little Corregidor up there. We have 43,000 supply, which is a lot. It's a level three fort already. We're working on getting it up to a level four. Uh, we have a good chunk of our, our forces here in the south are at this base. Um, and I'm a little bit hesitant to put too much in the southern half of Java because it's going to be very exposed to air raids off Celebs. And if he does land north of any of those bases, like if he lands at Maliang and we have troops to the south, they'll all be cut off and destroyed. So my, my plan is more or less to pull the bulk of our troops back in Batavia and kind of await him there uh, and hang out as long as we can. 
similar to what we've done at uh, at Singapore and sim similar to what we've done at Bataan. Bataan is still in good shape. We've got 29,000 supply there. We've got over 1,800 assault value here. We did bombard the troops here. He has two units here. They're two infantry divisions. That's all he has here. And he really doesn't seem to have much else on the Philippines. He's got 7,000 men at Clark Field. He's got a single unit at Manila. It seems like he's really pulled almost everything out of the Philippines, with the exception of these two strong divisions in our front. And we have a pretty good sense of that because we've got recon units at Bataan. I'm actually even of the opinion that if we launched an attack, we would probably win or at least drive him back to Clark Field. But I don't think it's worth it at this time because the units that we have, you know, we would win, but it would be kind of a Pyrrhic victory. And I don't think we'd damage his divisions enough that if we went on the offensive and attacked into an area that he had fortifications, that we would have any chance to uh, pursue or anything like that. 29,000 supplies is is enough to continue holding out if we're not in active combat. Um, but it's really only like three or four full battle replenishments worth of supply here. So we're probably better off just kind of hanging out. I think we probably have at least a month left of supplies at Bataan. I'm not quite sure. Maybe you know, Belugan. What is the supply required equal? Is that like a week of supplies? Is it, uh, you know... It's more than a day, that's for sure, because it's not going down by 7,000 every day. Uh, I think usually it's going down by like 1,000 a day at most, and that's usually only when he launches air raids against us, and I'm assuming that's largely because we're using flak to try and shoot at him. But um, I don't know what the actual supply total amount is. The total amount of supplies the troops need? Right, but like, I don't know what their consumption habits are. I don't know how much they're using. I, I could probably switch them into rest. That might be a smarter idea, but... Um, but I also don't, I don't know. I don't want him to take unnecessary damage from enemy air attacks either. But he's clearly just trying to starve us out. So, um, supplies are dropping by less than a thousand per turn. Um, I think a month ago we were at like 40,000. So we probably have at least a month left of supplies. And with the, the limited force that he has in place there, I think we can probably last into early April before Bataan falls. That would be my guess. One supply per AV per day. It's defi We're definitely not using 1,800 supply a day. I'm almost certain of that. Um, it hasn't been falling that rapidly. Okay. Meanwhile, Singapore, similar situation. 26,000 supply, but it's a much smaller force. It's only 1,100 assault value, so it's almost half the strength there. As a reminder, we did lose a fair amount of our strength trying to limit a landing of his that occurred at Mirsing. We succeeded, but we lost a lot of our combat strength there. Uh, but the good news is it's late February. Singapore hasn't fallen yet. He hasn't actually made a serious play for Singapore um, yet either. Yeah, we could probably turn replacements off. Is there a way to mass turn them off? And turn replacements and upgrades off to prevent us from bleeding too much supply. We already have that off for Bataan. Oops. So that's good. Um, meanwhile, one thing that I did do that was kind of interesting in between, between videos or between the end of the episode, I had a squadron of 25 P-40s at Perth, but they all had pilots of like 40 or less experience and the squadron has to be withdrawn by March 15th. Um, so what I actually did was I withdrew the squadron early. It gave me 30 political points and it looks like it threw the aircraft into the replacement pool, which is pretty freaking awesome. Like, I don't know if this is pool is limited to just the unit, these four units in Australia, or if these, these replacements can be used elsewhere. I mean, the squadron's kind of worthless. I'd rather just not, I'd rather honestly disband the squadron than lose the victory points if I used them in combat because they're, they have such bad pilots. Um, I didn't check the other squadrons to see. Yeah, it does let them pull from here. So this unit up here, this fighter group up here in Burma apparently has access to these 69 planes. Um, so that's pretty sweet. I'm assuming anyway. It says they're there. <laughs> yes, charcoal. Nice. 
Um, but yeah, I mean, you can pick the pilot specifically Belugan, but I didn't. And honestly, buried like south in Australia, I think it's unlikely in the next two weeks we're going to see an air raid on Perth or or probably even Brisbane. You know, maybe Darwin, maybe. Um, but I still have a P-40 squadron up in Darwin as well. So it does look like those planes do go into the pool that uh, can be pulled by any of the U.S. units. That's pretty fucking sweet. Because this group has relatively good pilots. 54 experience isn't great. But uh, 71, eh, they're not great. We can pick better ones. Uh, I did think I pulled another one of them back. Yeah, we pulled the 24th Pursuit group of the 17th uh, Pursuit squadron back. Has a single pilot left, uh, or plane left, but it has 24 pilots. Average experience is 53. You can see here, we've got a couple of good pilots. We've got uh, B.D. Wagner, 7 kills, 83 experience. W.A. Shepard, 78 experience, 5, uh, five kills. Uh, G.H. Armstrong, 6 kills, 76 experience. This is a pretty... Uh, Brisbane? Sorry. I'm saying Brisbane. I'm bad at pronunciations. I mispronounced uh, salmon in the last video. I pr pronounced it the USS Salmon. So there's that. But uh, yeah, so the plan will be to fill this entire squadron. Boom! Just like that. There's 12 aircraft and ma uh, maintenance damaged. So we'll get the squadron filled up. Um... I don't know, is this other squadron down here? Did it have the ability to pull? I didn't see. Probably not, right? They probably don't have the supply or the headquarters or the aircraft unit size or whatever the requirements are. Um, yeah. But uh, anyway, so we'll get, we'll get 12 aircraft coming into this squadron up in the north next turn. Maybe we can pull another 12 next turn to fill it out to its full 25 aircraft. That would be pretty freaking sweet. Can we, by any chance, upgrade these guys? Ooh. We could upgrade the Flying Tigers from H-81s to P-40Es. And then what we could actually do is we could then take some of these other squadrons in the Chinese Air Force and we could give them the H-81s. I think that's how it works. I think the H-81s will fall into the Chinese pool and we'll be able to pull from that. Well, what's a turn on replacements just to avoid having to micro every turn? <laughs> Belugan, what, what's a mistake? The game shouldn't be letting me do this? Or I, I shouldn't do this? I mean, it's probably fair to say the game shouldn't allow P-40s to be teleported from Australia to Bur Burma in a single day, but it's kind of the way the game works in some places. Don't give them the don't give the Chinese the planes in 42. Okay. Should I upgrade the Flying Tigers though? I don't have anyone else to fly the H81s. I could at least fill one of the squadrons out and then use the extra H81s to fill the other squadron up. So like give one of these the P40Es and then give the other the replacement H81s. Flying Tigers will be gone soon. Oh, well they don't withdraw till July. They stick around till July. The current situation in China means that, honestly, I think these planes will probably all be shot down before July anyway. Mm. Yeah, in about two real-life years, Kyle. Good point. I don't know. Part of me says giving them the, uh, the P-40Es would be interesting. Let's actually take a look across the Pacific, though. We've got... P-40Bs on Fiji. We could upgrade them to P-40Es. I need to get a, an Air HQ down to Fiji. Really bad. Because I'm using P-40Bs off Fiji. We've got 17 of them. We haven't lost any. I'm not sure where the squadron is under strength, but it is. The uh, We've got P-40Es and P-40Bs on Pago Pago. The P-40Bs can't use drop tanks. 
The P40B E's can. Sorry, the B's can't. The E's can. So the B, the E's can actually switch between bases, which is good. Um, because then I can, like, if he shows up at Fiji, then I can fly him over to Suva. If he shows up at Pago, I can fly the Suva planes over to, to well, the Suva planes are B's, so I can't. But generally speaking, um, same with Vavu. We sent our destroyers over here to try and see if we could go after, uh, any of his subs that were trying to torpedo our troop transport that was in Vavu. Uh, looks like it's float damage stayed at 72. But I don't know if she's ever getting out of there. <laughs> and we can stand her down, but float damage is going to be 59 no matter what. Do we have an AR? Do we have a repair ship in Pago? We do. We might be able to make some work on her if we can get her out of there. Uh, we have a uh, sub over here at Savi. I don't know if it's the same one that torpedoed our guy or not. We have our other subs that are moving up here on different missions. We ordered these guys out here a while ago. We've got an S-boat on its way toward Canton. Just to kind of scout out what the enemy might have there. We've got another one out here toward Baker. Um, and we've got a bunch of other subs moving. Mainly, I'm, I'm moving my subs out to different bases here to try and scout out what he has this way. He's really been doing limited work in the way of convoys that I've been able to detect. And my subs just are completely ineffective in and around Japan. So I'm, I'm trying to use them a little bit more as scouts. Um, well, patrols are... So I've got patrols set up here, Tortuga, but I've also... Or Belugan, but I've also started to switch some of my patrols to some of my larger groups to randomized hexes. So, like, I've got two groups that are... They're scout, or a, a group that's scouting north, and then the other two groups are assigned to random search patterns to try and fill in the gaps. So you can see we've got one patrol wing that goes up north here. I thought I have patrols com coming off of uh, off of Pearl, but I guess most of these guys are assigned to uh, ASW work. So we'll switch these guys around a little bit. Just so that we avoid too much in the way of surprises. So, I mean, we do have patrols kind of set up across across these different islands. There's a little bit of a gap in here. Penryn does have some Catalinas. I think they're assigned to random search arcs. So, I mean, we could set these guys to a, like, defined search arc this way. Just to try and, you know, close things up a bit. So we've got a reasonably strong arc of uh, of recon here. Probably a bit of a gap south of Christmas Island, but I, I don't know what he would be moving at in that direction anyway. Fiji has some search aircraft. Where are the Catalinas? Are they random? They are set to random. Um, the problem is I don't know where, really where to send send these guys. Like, where are they most likely to come from? Yeah, I don't know. Uh, with that being said, our search arcs did pick up an enemy task force moving east. We spotted two ships. We're reporting one heavy cruiser. We don't really know what it is. It is light rain, so we might have missed more. I don't think this is his carriers. Remember, a couple of turns ago, we thought we saw his carriers up north here at Midway, literally two turns ago, um, trying to go after our battleships, which uh, sort of uh, did a hasty retreat. Uh, we've now picked up some additional ships moving east. Two ships theoretically could be subs, but I don't think I've ever seen subs reported as heavy cruisers before. My assumption is it's he's got something and it's moving toward Palmyra. So he might hit, hit us at Palmyra next turn. Now, we, we do have... Um, well, he didn't hit us last turn, so... We do have three aircraft units at Palmyra, two B-17 units and a B-18 Bolo unit. Um, we are setting the B-17s to skip bombing because we did modify the house rules. 
So the B-17s can launch a skip bombing raid. Now, the problem is these guys are probably going to come in at night if they're moving at, like, flank speed, and they may hit Palmyra in the middle of the night. If it's a small cruiser task force, I'm honestly not too worried that he's going to ravage the airfield. We're not overstacked here. We've got 21 out of a potential 25 aircraft in support. We've only got 21 aircraft. Again, the base stack is up to 100. We've only got 72. He might destroy a couple of aircraft on the ground, more likely damaging a few. Um, but unless he's got battleships here, he's not going to nuke the island. And, and we know we had four or five battleships hitting us at Ambon last turn. So I don't think, you know, minus whatever he's got with the Kitty Butai, I think it's unlikely that he's got a lot of battleships to send this far east. Also, they're such huge fuel guzzlers, that doesn't seem a likely outcome. Additionally, we do have some Catalinas out this way and some B-17s out this way as well uh, that are being ordered into search patrols as well as the Catalinas are being ordered to bomb them as well. So we've got searches and we've got bombing strikes. Hopefully we can pick up these guys and we can get a good strike on them. If he doesn't have any aircraft, um, you know, then, uh, then, then not. Um, no, I don't have any way to mine the base next turn, unfortunately. That's something I've been doing a poor job of. I, uh, I have not been doing a good job of mining my bases. I have noticed that I don't have much in the way of mines to begin with. But nothing with regards to... I really haven't done much with mining. The one thing I was going to try and do is I did send a task force. And this is probably highly inefficient. But with as worthless as my subs seem to be, I did send a task force out with 84 mines. There's actually 92 mi 96 mines total between the two. But these guys have to rebase somewhere else. That are going to go to Wang Kao. He literally, like clockwork, the last four or five turns has been, well, more than that, really like the last three weeks, he's been using cruisers on bombardment runs in Wang Kao nonstop. And I know 96 mines is so few, it's probably unlikely that it's going to do anything, but I am going to throw the mines with sub mine laying into Wang Kao. Maybe we'll get lucky and one of his cruisers will run over, uh, run over uh, one of the mines. Dill Pickle Pickle Pickle. This is War in the Pacific. Great name, by the way. <laughs> um, this looks way more intimidating than it is out, out west here near truck just a lot of anti-submarine patrols um, we should probably move these guys to any we talk and see if, if maybe his carriers are based out of that way or Kwajalein or something we've already got some subs on their ways over here I don't want to run into mines though so probably we'll stop short of going into the actual base Um, so we'll see what happens in and around Palmyra. I'm kind of curious to see what, uh, uh what'll happen over this way. Hey, Dill Pickle Pickle. <laughs> thanks for, or Dill Pickle Pickle Pickle. Thanks for the follow. Jopa Bird, thanks for the follow. False Caesar, thanks for the follow. And Space Game Junkie, thank you for the follow. Sorry, I have my, for whatever reason, my notifications are turned off at the moment. Normally you get a nice little drop down, Civil War, Rebel Yell, that kind of stuff. Um, as you remember, we did see an enemy sub off the coast of Australia in the Bay Strait. We've got a couple of AOs that are on their way into Melbourne. We've ordered him to crank it up to full speed to try and minimize the likelihood that his subs uh, catch us or that his subs get a good fix on us. 16,000 uh, fuel on the way to Melbourne there. We've got an additional 20,000 coming in from Los Angeles on these two tankers and a, a Corvette escorting them. Uh, and then we've got uh, two empty Dutch uh, fleet oilers, kind of crappy fleet oilers, very small capacity moving out to Perth. Um, I'll probably set up an ASW team. I don't really have much in the way of ASW currently at Melbourne. I've got like a single destroyer. I don't know if I have an AM or... Nope, just the single destroyer with the level 2 ASW skill. So not, not great. But we'll move them out that way. Um, let's see. These guys are unloading supply on Kangaroo Island to make sure they've got supplies. 
Perth, meanwhile, our carriers did put to sea, so we left Perth last turn. Our, our carriers are headed north. They're going to sit west of Christmas Island, out of range of anything the Japanese have over here. Um, until the Japanese take more bases further west, uh, they're not going to be able to effectively cover Christmas Island. So they're actually going to sit right around here. And then we're going to see what to do. We may duck them in south here and then put a, a fighter cover over some cruisers that we'll let loose and can go have them sort of raid into the Java Sea if we see enemy shipping moving this way. We've got all of this huge amount of bombers off Surabaya. So again, we can make sure that we've got a pretty good uh, pretty good coverage over the, uh, over the enemy naval movements. And actually, to that point, to, to Belugan's point earlier, we should do a couple of rebasings of some of these units. Now, with this many aircraft, I think random search is probably a pretty safe bet. Um, just because it's unlikely that they're going to um, hit us very hard. Without, or sorry, it's unlikely with that many aircraft that they'd sneak much in there. Here's the thing, Belugan. The carriers are moving north. I know kind of what's going on. I know that, or I believe I know that his carriers are out toward Midway. So I do know what, like, bases he can stage out of. He can stage out of Mascar. He can stage out of Kandari. He can stage out of Timor. Or, sorry, Kopang. Those are the airfields that he could have bombers out of and that we have some indication that he does. The bases he's, he's taken down here so far are all underdeveloped. They don't have the ability to carry large aircraft numbers. He hasn't taken any bases in the north that are able to support anything except for Swing Kang. Sorry, those guys can't reach there. Um, so in terms of what we know what's going on, we know it is relatively, we know it is pretty damn safe west of Christmas Island. Um, so we can find out what's going on in terms of his shipping. The thing is, he's not moving shipping into the Java Sea yet. We know that he's going to move shipping into the Java Sea. We're pretty certain that he's going to start an air campaign against Java in the near future. He's going to have to base it out of Balak Papan, Maskar, Kendari. We know that he's going to have to send naval assets across the Java Sea to force a landing. I would imagine he's probably not going to land directly in Sorabaya. That has too many coastal guns, and he's got too many veteran players that are sort of coaching him in this. The likely landing points to me seem to be Benjuangi. Uh, that would probably be the most likely, unless he's going to stretch himself north toward Tejapo, but Tejapo is is really beyond the reach of his effective air cover, unless he you know moves in to take um, Ben Jerzmani Ger first, and that would give him a much better reach. So that would actually probably be a logical place for him to go next. Um, he hasn't landed there yet. He may be going that way with some troops next, but that would be the logical staging point with a level three airfield to really control Java. Until he does, though, our aircraft carriers are pretty damn safe to sit anywhere out here. And then if we see an opportunity to race in, if we see too much danger, then we can always fall back. My intention is not to be reckless with the carriers, but to be um, in, a, in a position that we can take advantage of the fact that we believe his carriers are elsewhere. Um, so, you know, that's the situation right now. I, I, he hasn't even started to bomb Darwin either. So I think that's unlikely. I mean, we've got, we've got Vildebeest, we've got torpedo bombers there, um, with different units there. We've got 240 assault value there, which isn't a ton. It's not great. He'd have to lay in probably like a brigade or a division, a full brigade or division. We've got level three fortifications. I, you know, I don't think he's going to land on Darwin anytime soon. The entire thrust of his movement and his effort has all been northwest, unless that's all some sort of rouge. But I, I don't uh, ruse, but I rouge, uh, ruse, whatever words. But I don't think that's likely. Yep, we know he's not killing Bataan. Those forces are elsewhere. We also know he's not really killing Singapore yet. Those forces are elsewhere. Uh, we have seen considerable forces in the south near New Caledonia. We know he landed at least a full brigade on New Caledonia. As a reminder, he did take New Caledonia. Um, he also has taken all of Espiritu Santos, so we're way behind there. He could be moving forces east toward Palmyra. That is definitely a possibility with the, uh, with the spotting of the cruisers over this way. 
Um, Guadalcanal is already Japanese, so that's not a thing that we uh, that we need to worry about. Um, you know, hope he doesn't take old Caledonia. Yeah. We know he landed a brigade here. He landed a brigade on a completely unoccupied island at uh, Morotai, um, or a BDE, maybe not a brigade, but whatever a BDE stands for. We've seen a division spread out between Borneo and Celebs. He landed parts of the 4th Division on Celebs, parts of the 4th Division on Borneo. He landed a full brigade on Timor. So we do know that he's going to, you know, he's going to have several forces in and around this area. I just think it's highly unlikely based on anything that we've seen that he's going to do Darwin. And frankly, if he doesn't do Java, if he if he moves forward toward Band Band Germazen, Again, we've got an opportunity to to take advantage of the fact that uh, his, the, the bulk of his naval force seems to be elsewhere. And you know what? If we don't do anything, we can always pull the carriers back, too. The goal at this point with, with our forces in this region is to give him a bloody nose, to make him pause, make him think, make him reinforce areas that he, he doesn't have enough strength in yet. Uh, and, and that's really the goal is to really just make him pause and slow down a little bit. It's not to expose the carriers to undue risk, uh, but we do need to remind him that they exist. I really think the Palmyra mission may be an attempt to lure our carriers out. He may think the carriers are still at Pearl, and he's trying to go for a base that he thinks like would be completely, you know, um, something we have to defend. It is worth 300 victory points. I don't have enough reinforcements here to really hold versus any meaningful troops. We got a Marine Defense Battalion plus the in there. That's the only thing we've added to the base so far. We did have troops on the way there, so we do have uh, reinforcements. The Second Marine Field Artillery Battalion here, uh, which is an additional, well, uh, apparently not an additional twelve. It, it's basically just some howitzers. Uh, and then we've got the Second Marine Raider Battalion, which is on the way, which is forty assault value more. Um, so we do have some reinforcements on the way to Palmyra, but they're probably going to be too late if this is really a landing force. Um, Christmas Island's in much better shape. She's got a Canadian brigade uh, just kind of hanging out here. Unfortunately, the Canadians are mostly militia, so it's a little bit of a paper tiger unit. But um, still, it's got a it's got a Canadian brigade on Christmas Island. Uh, as well as a Marine Raider Battalion, and then some base force uh, elements as well. Um, Christmas Island's fortifications are up to level 2. They're working toward level 3. Palmyra is the same. Level 2 working toward level 3. Um, we've got some... Uh, what else is going on here? We also have the Americal Division, which is relatively safe. It's going way out of the way. It's on its way to Sydney, the Americal Division, uh, which is a, a pretty strong unit here. Uh, if we take a look here, we can see the uh, TOE here, 273 rifle squads. We could, in the event that he does take Palmyra, and they've started planning to retake New Caledonia for what it's worth, uh, but in the event that he does take uh, New Cal or does take Palmyra, we may divert them to Pearl and have them start planning for Palmyra to launch a counterattack there. It is an atoll, which makes taking it a little bit more challenging because it's got like a 6,000-man stacking limit. Um, which is one of the reasons it's not super over-reinforced, um, but in any event. Uh, in terms of victory points right now, the Allies still have more victory points. We've got 10,443. The Japanese have 8,386. The Japanese win an auto victory if at the end of 1942 they have three times the Allied score. So here we're going okay, but when we start losing some of these land forces, at like Singapore, for example, we're going to lose a lot of victory points. I think it's one victory point per squad. So like losing this division is going to be like... 300 400 victory points just uh just by itself just losing these troops i don't think support counts i think it's just infantry sections so maybe more like 300 assault value or 300 victory points so like losing singapore is going to be kind of a disaster um as it historically was the same goes for Bataan, but the likelihood of him getting to three times our score uh in the near future seems to me pretty low the big risk is back out in china where we've got this whole force, uh, 200,000 men, um, 6,000 assault value all back here, is currently cut off. They have supply, 
but not enough. They've got, you know, 19,000 is a complete resupply. All the troops are do have supply right now. They're in uh, Shaoyang, but their supply source from Chikikong is cut off by a para unit that dropped in our rear. Now, these troops are withdrawing. They are moving back. So all but one unit, which is going to be a rear guard, are all moving back toward this base. They're actually probably mostly going to... Half of them are going to be in this hex next turn, the other half the following turn. And then we're going to go back this way. We're going to cross the river and crush these guys. We'll be on the other side of a river and we'll be in rough terrain. So that'll be good for us. The only bad thing is he can move north here and cross the river a little bit further north and get in toward Chongqing. So that is a threat. That's also a very good roadway back there that he could make a straight shot for the capital, which has a huge fortification, but not a lot of troops in it right now. Um, we know he's got probably the bulk of his 5,000 assault value was at Changsha. He's moved some of them north, threatening toward Changtha. We don't have very much here. That's going to fall if it gets attacked. We do have reinforcements on the way here about 1,300 assault value that are trying to get down there, but he might win the race there. It's going to be two or three days before before we get there. Um... Meanwhile, uh, we also have supplies still coming in from Cape Town. Uh, we're, we're supplying Australia from the West Coast. So we do have quite a bit of supply and some fuel that are coming in from Cape Town. We're also supplying Australia with fuel coming down from Colombo. So we've got 32,000 on these tankers. Uh, we've got, you know, 100,000 supply on the way to Rangoon and these, these, these uh, ships as well. Okay. We are working, I believe, on our fortifications all along the Australian coast, uh, just in the event that he makes any kind of landing there. We do have uh, not a ton of troops in Sydney, but we do have a fair number of troops sort of back out off the coast at Wagga Wagga. We just are about to form an Australian division here. Uh, we also have some troops that are forming up at Toowoomba as well. Um, the 2nd Australian Cavalry Brigade is out west there. Uh, the 6th Australian Infantry Division, a crack infantry division, is on the way down via transports to Perth. Not sure where they are at this point. Here they are. So we've got the crack 6th Australian Division. Uh, some of the desert rats are moving down to Perth. Uh, they're making pretty good progress. They're, they're, they're headed down in this, ge this general direction. It's actually another good reason to put the carriers out here is to screen these guys because we can't afford to lose these guys at sea. Uh, this is a, a very good unit that's coming down. If we take a look here, there is 72 experience, um, 83 morale unit with very good troops and support. Okay. Uh, we also just got the 7th Division, by the way, as well, which is also on the way. I think we ha currently have it tasked for Karachi, but we might actually move it to Australia instead. Um, again, it's another, another very good division spread out over a lot of transports. But if you take a look here, it's, it's worth. It's got over 300 uh, troops with over 60 experience and 80 morale. So those two divisions would go a long way toward bolstering Australia against Japanese invasion. But um Yeah, I don't have a lot else to show you guys this turn. I know it's a little bit of a shorter stream. Actually no, we've been going almost an hour. I'm not sure if there's anything else you guys want to look at. Our battleships at Pearl did fall back here. Um, they're all kind of sitting back at port. We've got six battleships ready. Uh, we've got three battleships repair, repairing. One of them is 35 days away, the Oklahoma. The rest of our battleships have pulled back to the U.S., again, where they're under repair as well. The Pennsylvania. The, uh, I think the Arizona is almost repaired as well. Yeah, she's, well, no, 88 days for the Arizona, 32 for the Maryland. Um, if we take a look at ships sunk so far in the war, we really haven't lost much in terms of like really valuable ships anyway. 
So we've lost a fair number of ships, but the most valuable ship we've lost so far is the USS Houston. Uh, it is 35 points. We've lost a couple of uh, troop transports, which are valuable. The President Coolidge, 34. The uh, Ringgitada, 21. Uh, one tanker, the Saland, was 18. The British Motorist was 20. The Pan Europa was 28. And the Herberg was 23. So a few, tra- a few tankers that we've lost uh, that uh, probably hurt us the most. We did lose the, the AV Langley, the Fleet Oiler Pecos, um, and a couple of other troop transports. Uh, against what we're claiming of the Japanese, we did not sink the Congo, we did not sink the Fuso, but we did sink the Haruna. Haruna. We have confirmed the Haruna sank. Um, I don't think we sank the Maya, but I'm sure, pretty sure we sank two to three enemy light cruisers, um, as well as supposedly a bunch of subs. I don't know if that's true. I know we've sunk a few of them at least. Um, yeah, the enemy screwed up Pearl real bad. He, uh, he, we did it where he could modify his turn one stuff and he sent in his zeros on like strafing at a hundred feet and they got mauled. He lost like 30 or 40, um, he lost 30 or 40, uh, zeros in the attack on Pearl. And by, I mean, zeros, I mean, not 30 or 40 total planes. He lost 30 or 40, uh, AM six, two, uh, or a six M two zeros at Pearl as well as um, a few of his other aircraft. But he did not have a very good Pearl. He didn't sink a single battleship at Pearl. Um, if we take a look at uh, top... Well, if we, let's take a look at aircraft losses. Not a lot last turn, but if we take a look at since the game started, we're claiming anyway 251 Japanese Zeros shot down, 113 in air-to-air combat, 66 to flak. I want to say like half of that was... Per, more than half of that was Pearl. And then three ops losses. He's also lost 168 sallies. Um, most of those over Singapore. Um, and we've lost a fair number of buffaloes and P-40Es. That's to be expected. He lost 70, 140 actually, Nels and Bettys. About 60 to 70 of those were over Clark Field, where we got in on a couple of his bomber formations and shot him up pretty good. So I think the biggest loss for him so far is the fact that he's lost so many zeros. That's a lot of experienced pilots, especially the ones over Pearl. Uh, Bleach Acid? Uh, The war goes... Well, it goes. I don't know if it goes good or bad, but it goes. Um... He did take Midway, yeah, so that, that definitely helps him. Uh, we also didn't lose the Prince of Wales or the Repulse. Both of these ships were badly damaged in a naval battle off Mersing, where he tried to land some troops, but he didn't get the historical uh, land-based uh, attacks on, uh, on those units. So Prince of Wales is out of action for quite a while. Repulse will be back before too long. Um... Morale of the forces, Belugan? Like, I don't... Is there a way to check, like, a general level of morale, or do I have to go by through, like, each unit? Like, most of these guys have pretty good... Most of my American units, anyway, at Pearl. They're just all sitting back here. They've got pretty damn good morale. Oh, morale of the troops. You know, I'm a little bit... A little bit frustrated at the loss of New Caledonia. I did reinforce it slightly, but it wasn't enough. Uh, that that hurt. He took that about a month ago. Um, you know, the fact that he took a lot of these eastern Pacific islands where I just didn't have the ability to get troops to was a little bit frustrating as well. We, we actually retook Baker after he took it, and then he took it back. We only sent in, like, a fraction of a base force unit with a few infantry units, but we did manage to retake it briefly. Um, he's just got a lot of small little landings way out ahead of where they historically took, and I wasn't quite prepared. I did beef up Suva and Nadi pretty good. Uh, some of it with Australian units, some of it with American units. We've got a full Australian regular infantry, or New Zealand a re- regular infantry brigade down here. They've got regular troops. They're not even militia, so these guys are pretty good. We've also got the 161st American Regiment, which isn't very, it's pretty green, but it's that's a pretty strong force at Suva. Um, and then Nadi has a, a, a stronger force in terms of assault value, but they are all militia troops. Um, we'll have the first Australian division here shortly, assuming our transport doesn't get sunk. We've got the fraction of the 41st, uh, Australian battalion is heading east. These guys haven't been detected yet either. We haven't seen any aircraft operating out of New Caledonia. Um, so if they get to Nadi, then we'll form that up into the first Australian infantry division. Um, and I think, I think Suva's in pretty good shape or, um, uh, Fiji's in pretty good shape. 
Uh, Pago Pago is also in relatively good shape. We've got the 8th Marine Regiment, the 34th U.S. Infantry Regiment, uh, both down here. So two good American units on Pago. We've kind of been making Pago our uh, our forward base. It's got a four airfield. The, the idea was this is sort of the rock to build our Fiji line on. We ended up making Fiji pretty strong too. It's at level three forts. They're getting closer to level four fortifications. So that should help the fact that these guys are pretty brittle. Um, I'm sure he can take any one of those bases, Belugan, but he'd have to commit a strong force to it, I guess is the point. Um, also, it helps that we've got a reasonable uh, air wing at, uh, at Fiji. You know, we've got 127 aircraft. Of those aircraft, 53 are fighters, all quasi-modern, although the Buffaloes aren't great. I'm really curious about the quality of his fighters on his, uh, on his carrier groups, though, because if he lost 30 or 40 zeros in the first mission, he probably lost a fair number of experienced pilots. Um, we also have airfields at Nadi, which we can switch some of our air units over to. Um, we have Pago Pago, which has another 50 modern aircraft. Uh, the P-40Es can transfer west toward Fiji as necessary. Uh, we've also got some B-26 Marauders, which have come in here. We've got uh, a further unit that's unloading here with some additional supply. Uh, they actually just unloaded this new, uh, this new group here with the, the 19, or sorry, 16 P-40Es and the B-26 Marauders. Those are new. They just arrived. Uh, we have troops that just landed on Vavu. This is going to be sort of the central linchpin between Suva and Pago, allowing us to shift forces between the two. It's kind of an idea of like overlapping forts. Um, so this has the ability to be a level four airfield with a level three port. Uh, we landed a, a strong, uh, or we landed a portion of the second Marine regiment. Uh, we also landed the second USMC parachute battalion. Uh, and then we were potentially going to pull for the, uh, one of these, the other parts of the second Marine regiment. Once we clear the sub out of this area. He landed on Savi, that is true. He There were no troops. I, I mean, it was like two troops on Savi. It was like a fast transport, and uh, he overwhelmed the uh, the native base there, but we didn't have any troops there. So. We also stopped an invasion of Raul. We sank uh, a couple of his destroyers that were trying to do a fast transport to land on Raul, and we intercepted his, his force there and sank it. Okay. We have additional reinforcements that are on the way. I do need to do a better job of mining. Hey, Belugan, while I've got you, what's the uh, type of ship that uh, maintains minefields? Is it an AM lowercase c? Are those the ships that make sure your mines don't all wash away real quick? Or is it the ACMs? I feel like I don't have any ACMs. Huh. In any event, I do need to... I don't have a lot of mine layers. I've got some destroyer mine layers. What's a good number of mines that I should try and make sure we lay? I mean, right now we've obviously got to worry about the fact that he's uh, he's moving in toward Palmyra, so that's a, a bit of a, a delay in our ability to shift anything west. We did mine Johnston Island. I don't know if a hundred mines is is a hundred mines is enough. Well, then maybe maybe we'll mine one of his cruisers. We're gonna have ninety six mines at Wang Kao between these uh, these subs that are gonna be dropping mines here. Maybe we can give one of his uh, cruisers a little bit of a of a bloody nose. That'd be exciting. Meanwhile, I did mention that the carriers are moving north. Um, as a reminder, we've got uh, Admiral Raymond Spruance in command of the Yorktown Indomitable Task Force. Uh, and then we've got uh, Admiral Bill Halsey, uh, William, William, is it William Bill Halsey? 
in charge of the three carrier task force over here, the Enterprise Saratoga Lexington. We have a couple of extra cruisers if we want to do like a cruiser sweep or something like that under fighter cover um, or, or wh wh whatever. Uh, the dive bombers are all currently, all of the bombers are currently set to uh, stand down at the moment. Why did these guys, how did they get so much damage? They're all ordered to stand down. Why are there so many maintenance? That's weird. I wonder, wonder if they recently upgraded to new aircraft. Uh, Belugan, I know there's, uh, what do you call it? There's um, coordination penalties when you have more than a certain number of aircraft in a task force. I'm well aware of that. I was actually talking to uh, to someone else who told me that uh, that's a very minor minor penalty and not really something to worry about. So we'll see. I've got the ships to break it up if, uh, if, if we need to. Why are my fighters all... What the hell? Are they like that because their task force is too big? I don't, I'm not sure why there's so many that are maintenanced. I have no idea why that happened. We didn't have them operating at high anything, tempo or anything. In any event, they're probably four or five days from being up near Christmas Island anyway. So we'll see. I mean, nothing may come of this either, but we'll have to make it. We'll have to keep a good eye on the uh, the carrier groups. I don't. I mean, maintenance is a thing, but I think probably what we would do is if we do end up sending them in. And again, I'm not going to send them in right now because I don't have any intel on anything in here to strike. But if I do send them in, I'd probably only send them about this far, maybe this far in. And uh, I'd have to do the math off the hexes to see where the Bettys lose their torpedoes, because that's kind of the, the logic that we would use. And then um, I think it actually might be like back here. But um, in any event, we would only send them in far enough to be able to either s provide air cover over some cruisers as they dash in and out of the straight down here, uh, which is eh, right around here would be the fighter range to, to cover guys out to here. Um, and then, or if we saw something, we could also move them north through the Batavian Strait into the northern edge of the Java Sea. We'd be further away from his Betty's on either of these bases. Although we'd have to do some recon over Swing King to make sure there's nothing out that way, because that is a level three air base he could base out of. So we would we would run some recon to get some more intelligence, but I don't want to tip my hand quite yet. So I'm moving my carriers in relatively as stealthy as I can. So what we'll probably do is I'm trying to hug the coast of Australia at the moment because we did have some intel on enemy subs that were interdicting shipping going in and out of Perth. They didn't get a detection in on our cruisers or on our carriers, and our carriers did get by them. So my plan will probably be to move them up to about here and then swing them out further west uh, and then either coming in north around here or south around here. I will butt the, uh, the task force out a bit. No, Newhauser, his subs are not on the coast. His subs have been operating. We spotted one out this way a couple turns further west. We spotted one here. The entire reason his subs are here is because we've been pushing a huge amount of fuel into Perth. There's one sub on the coast, and it's behind our carriers. I'm pretty sure it can't catch up at this point. I mean, maybe if he goes flank, but he doesn't even know we're there. I really don't think there's any more subs on the coast, guys. I'm pretty certain. We saw one sub out west here. And one over here. <laughs> Maybe he's got like a third up here. I don't know. But the the reason he's got su he's had subs deployed west because we've been having ships go west in and out of Perth on like a direct direct line. XTRG does broadcast, yes. Um, because, again, uh, as a refresher, we've put probably about 400,000 fuel into Perth since the start of the war. We pulled about 300,000 fuel out of Palembang and Java, all told. 
Uh, Palembang obviously has a shit ton of oil, but uh, we pulled the majority of the fuel out and turned the refineries off. So there's not a ton of fuel left without needing to be refined. Um, and then we pulled all of the oil that started in Java out, all of the fuel that started in Java out, although that's, some of those figures have started to kick up a little bit uh, because he started throwing subs in and around the straits near Oosthaven and, uh, and whatnot. So that has slowed our withdrawal of fuel and oil out of, uh, out of Java. But we, we have pulled about 300,000 fuel out of the Dutch East Indies, and we've brought 100,000 or so fuel out of the Middle East, all flowing through Perth, which has to be one of the busiest ports in the world right now. And then that fuel is making, making its way probably somewhat inefficiently to the Australian East Coast. You can see we've got 32,000 fuel at Melbourne. Um, Sydney has 329,000 fuel. So there's quite a lot of fuel in uh, Australia as a whole. Um, it looks like a, a large amount of it's at Sydney. We've got over 100,000 fuel at Perth as well. Um, all trying to do our best to keep the Australian economy sort of churning and producing supply for us because Australia can really s provide all the supply you need uh, if, if you keep enough fuel coming into it. We even put a little bit of oil. I think we pulled like 10,000 oil out of the Dutch East Indies into Melbourne at one point because it has heavy industry there. Um, we haven't put in it, so we put about 400,000 fuel into Perth. We've probably put about 100,000 fuel into Melbourne, mainly because um, the distance between the U.S. and Australia is much greater than the distance to uh, the Dutch East Indies and Perth. We had quite a nice little conveyor belt of tankers using all the game starting tankers in India and in, in the Dutch East Indies. We, so we had quite a conveyor belt there going for a while. Uh, we were really pulling a ton out. Like I pulled all of the fuel out of Java where I couldn't even load any more fuel on ships because there was nothing left in Java. We nearly got to that point at uh, Palembang, but that then he shut it down. That's how we lost uh, probably two of our four tankers that we've lost so far. But yeah, that's probably enough of me rambling at this point. If there's anything else you guys want to see at this point, we can definitely take a look at it. Um, but, uh, I think next turn could be interesting. We'll see what he does to Pal Palmyra. Um, you know, I've got about 400 assault or 400 political points. Not quite sure what to use it on. We've got some troops here that we can probably load up on transport soon and, and send them places as well. I probably should be doing a better job of putting troops forward on some of these islands. Um, I did sortie the carriers, uh, Kushin. Um, I have turned off replacements for some of these units, or um, I think all the units on the West Coast, but I might have done it a little bit too late with a few of them. We had, where is it? We had one base. Was it San Francisco? No. It wasn't one of these guys. Actually, maybe it was the 35th. No, it wasn't. I'm trying to think. There was a unit here. Oh, the 40th Infantry Division. The 40th Infantry Division is like... 2,800 political points to uh, move it to a headquarters that we can use. It's currently locked to the West Coast. So I did break it into three different um, segments, brigades or whatever they would be, to try and make it easier to afford to get the 40th to the front. But it's going to be a long time before we have the political points for that, so I probably will end up using them on other things as well. I'm also kind of annoyed because apparently Admiral Kimmel is still in charge, and that's just irksome to me. Although uh, one of the, I think one of the developers was saying like it doesn't even matter that Kimmel's in charge, like it doesn't actually affect the game all that much. Carrier air group assignments? You mean like their orders? I'm mostly just having them sit on the deck because I don't want them seeing Dauntlesses or Devastators spotting subs. So right now they are currently stood down because the last thing I want is him having a, a sub out this way and he sees, oh my goodness, there's a Dauntless. I should probably, you know, <laughs> be aware of that. Like, They're blind for now, uh, Belugan, yes. They won't be forever, but once I get out past Australia... I 
I, I mean, most of my, t- I've got, you know, recon planes here, but most of them are set to ASW patrols. So these guys are flying ASW off the, uh, off the Australian coast. We've got some ASW patrols off Perth as well. I don't have any naval sighting on the west coast of Australia. Maybe that's hubris, but I'm not too worried about him sending a surface task force this far, or an air, or certainly an air task force. Yep, that's one of the red subs off uh, Kushin. I think we we I'm, we've spotted two or three over the last few turns. I think he had one over here a while ago. I thought when we sallied, he had one here and one here. So there were two. What, what do you mean, what's my CV sighting? My CV's not... There's nothing. He hasn't detected it, if that's what you mean. There's no detection on the, on the carriers. No, my carriers have not been sighted. Not in several weeks, anyway. He may have detected them at one point around Australia. I think they had a very low detection value, so it's possible he saw them. But there's no way he could have been certain. He's never spotted the British carriers either. <laughs> it's insane from a historical perspective not to do patrols. I get that, but I also don't want to give away my position. You know, it's kind of like sending a carrier in a modern warfare situation in with its radar off. Granted, I know you've got the, the the patrol aircraft that go above, but uh, moon, moon. How do I tell that again? Is that weather? No. Where's the moon sightings? Oh, it is in the forecast. Where do you get the moon? Yeah, it's gonna be it's going to be clear sky in my AO. Currently it's thunderstorms. They're currently in the thunderstorm port portion of the hex. They're sailing through severe storms. Oh, moonlight up here, fifty three percent. Um, I'm I'm not sure if it's a new week or not. We should probably look at the intel here. So radio detections at 105.95 and 84.99. I don't know where that is. One oh five ninety nine. So that's probably these guys. Or close. Okay, so something here. Okay, that's not a shock. Um, 84.99 would be further north even, so that's not... I don't have anything operating up that way. Um, let's see, who else is doing what? Radio detection at Saipan. Construction is located at Shanghai. Heavy volume of radio traffic at truck. Um, Belugan, I'm a I'm a war in the Pacific novice. You should know that. You gave me a. Mixture between Midway and Coral Sea in April of 40, 42 when we played. One carrier sunk, one badly damaged. Fleet carriers. Although I did chase your carriers down with my uh, uh, with my heavy cruisers. I ran my heavy cruisers so far that they ran completely out of fuel on the northern coast of Australia. I sank your carrier, and then I literally had like 
six heavy cruisers just sitting here with absolutely no fuel for like five days until I could race some fleet oilers down to give them some extra fuel. And uh, I was just thankful that you didn't turn your carriers around and finish them off because they were just sitting there floating. Uh, that would have been a great uh, that would have been a great turn or a couple of turns for War in the Pacific series on YouTube. Uh. Okay. Well, the only difference, Belugan, is that in my case, you, you sank one Japanese carrier, you crippled another, it was going to be out of service for like a year, and then another was going to be out for like two months. So the Kitty Butai was pretty badly wrecked. All right, guys, um, <laughs> that's, uh, that's going to do it. Uh, we're going to wrap this up. I appreciate you all coming out. Belugan, thanks for the help. Uh, hope you guys have a great night. Stay safe, stay healthy, stay isolated. Until next time, this is the Historical Gamer saying once again, thank you very much for watching, uh, and until next time, I'm out.